So yes, for this week's main topic, hello everybody. We are talking all about the majesty of Disney castles. We've done that in the past. Last time we did it talking about the U.S. castles. Now we're looking at all the fantastic, the wonderful, amazing castles that are from abroad. So the other countries that have Disney castles. And what's mostly exciting about this is it's a Michelle <laughs> research piece, which we all know Michelle does the best research. So you're bound to learn some fantastic things, some wonderful things, some new things. And uh, I'm always excited for these because they're, they're, they're are phenomenal. So Michelle, take it away. Tell us about the Disney castles from abroad. All right. Well, thank you for that intro, honey. I felt like it was appropriate to wear my Disneyland Paris 30th anniversary scarf today because it's, it features the castle there. Um, it's very pretty. Uh, yeah. You can see it thank there. You, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> for those but of it, you who are watching us on YouTube, if you're <laughs> listening to this, watch us on YouTube and you'll right. see it. That's true. That's true. You know, I, I think you've already given a good introduction of why we're talking about this. You know, the castles are, you know, quite the iconic symbol for the parks. It, you know, represents magic, fantasy, storytelling. Um, and so I thought we'd, you know, share some details about the parks, castles around the world. Now, rather than doing like, okay, let's talk all about this one, then this one, I thought we'd look at some themes. And so the first theme I thought we could delve into is like the, the design, the, the influences and inspirations that the Imagineers used to create these castles. Um, now, I know the predominance are castles from Europe, but they all have different styling and other architectural elements that make them unique and different. So let's take a first look at Tokyo Cinderella's castle. Now, as you can see on this, there um, it's actually a duplication of the Magic Kingdom in Orlando's ca Cinderella's Castle. And I know we've talked about in the past that Tokyo really wanted to have a Disney park. And so they liked what was already there. And it was easier than for the company to, you know, replicate those things over in Tokyo rather than starting from scratch. Now, the chief designer for Cinderella's Castle in the Magic Kingdom, aka now Tokyo Cinderella's Castle, was Herb Ryman, um, who was the one who actually not only designed Sleeping Beauty's Castle at um, the park in California, but it was his artistry of what the park should look like that really helped Walt and his brother uh, get the commitment from the banks to fund that project. Uh, now, we've also discussed in the past a lot that he took his influences, his cultural influences from European palaces and castles for the design of that castle, the Cinderella's castle. And it's beautiful. Uh, but let's look now at the next international park that came out and that was in Disneyland Paris. Now the Imagineers wanted to create a more fairy tale appearance rather than looking like a real world European castle. So their inspirations included things like French monuments and artworks that they found in museums to help create this, you know, it's like flowy and like I said, it, it doesn't look like a, a real life castle, right? It looks much more fantasy. It's, it's a beautiful castle. It may be um, arguably the, the, it's definitely the, I, I would say, and this is just from my point of view, um, the most beautiful Disney castle that we've seen in person. Right. You know, we love all the Disney castles we've seen. We've only seen three of them in person. Um, of course, Cinderella Castle at uh, Walt Disney World at Magic Kingdom and Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland. But we've also seen this castle, um, Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland Paris. And it is stunning when you get to yes, see it. Um, yes. It's amazing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, to no. There. I'm glad you said that, you know, but as you can see, the lines are very flowy. Um, so. This one to me was really amazing in my research of what I found. So uh, the design is kind of a combination, as I mentioned, of different things. Um, you, you can kind of see the elements of Mont Saint-Michel uh, in that, in the, in the kind of the way it, it, it 
that's erected and it flows. Um, but they also took inspiration from some medieval artwork found in museums in France. I mean, things that date back hundreds of years ago in just books that they found images of castles and, and then they used some of that and you can see it. Um, the roof pattern on this castle is similar to a building that was once a hospital in Burgundy, France in the 1400s. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about eclectic kind of uh, capturing of, of inspiration. The dome and the stained glass windows, especially on the northern side of the castle, is inspired by one that sits on top of uh, Chateau de Chambord. That was a castle over 500 years history. And the influence of that castle came from the works of Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other really interesting thing is in this um, next image, there were there are some tree shaped twisted pillars. Um, and those yeah, I can see them there. Yeah, yeah, right. And those were inspired by a, a church in Paris, um, Saint Severin, Severin. I don't think I'm saying it right. But anyways, uh, the design of the church was made to represent uh, palm tree forest. So mm. it kind of makes sense that the Disney Imagineer saw that and adapted it to the forest and Sleeping Beauty. Mm. I mean, it's it's just to me stunning and, and unique how they've captured the essence of that other uh, monument in Paris as part of this this castle. Yeah, and, it's beautiful inside as it is out. Right, yeah. right. So I, again, I, I just found the, it's so fascinating, the details of, of how they took inspiration for that castle. All right. Speaking of another castle with some unique history in, in its design, it's the one in Hong Kong Disneyland. Now, when it first opened, it was Sleeping Beauty's castle, and it was patterned very much like the one you see in California. That looks exactly like right? it. Right? Like you would think if you <laughs> if you didn't tell me necessarily. Now, I mean, the backdrop I could probably tell from the background. There's no uh, Matterhorn near there. There's a few things missing. I'll be like, okay. This isn't Disneyland right. in California. Uh, but other than that, if you were just to give me the frame of the castle, it's nearly identical. Right, right. Uh, however, they decided in, you know, to make a change. And in 2020, they completely transformed it into what is now the Castle of Magical Dreams. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what's really great is, and, and you see this castle, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, um, they didn't knock down that original structure that was there. They, they, they really wanted to keep that in honor of Walt. So what they ended up doing was building on top of and around it to come up with that. Um, now, for those of you on who are, are watching this on YouTube, you're getting to see in this next shot, it's just kind of, uh, uh, you know, highlighting the bottom section of the Castle of Magical Dreams. And as you can see, it does still contain the original, the shape of the original Sleeping Beauty Castle that was there. So they just built up on it, essentially. Right. They, they built up on what was the base, which was Sleeping Beauty Castle, just like you've seen, saw in the first picture, or just like you've seen at Disneyland. And then they built on it and made it even more glorious and wonderful and right. fascinating. And that's cool. Yeah, I love how they left that brick look to it you know they actually accentuated it more a, of a dark brick um to really highlight but you know if you think about it, that the base of it is very similar to walt's original castle yeah uh, again you're you're definitely gonna after you listen to this episode uh to get more context and a lot of this that michelle is talking about you are going to want to watch the youtube uh, video of this because she has some phenomenal pictures pointing out some interesting things um that's that's fascinating it's a, it's a gorgeous castle not that it wasn't a gorgeous castle before um but now it, it, the, what they've done with it is uh, spectacular that's for sure so yeah. yeah check that out or you know just go online and check out some pictures Right. of what it became before and after. Yeah. Um, now, the architecture takes inspiration from 13 Disney princesses and queens. So it uses colors, icons, symbols, and patterns that are unique to each of those royals. And so what ends up happening as a result is it is an eclectic architecture castle design. Um I saw it described as a mosaic. I thought that was kind of a good definition, mosaic of different cultures because of 
these princesses and queens, uh, their storylines coming from Europe, China, the Pacific Islands, and Southeast Asia, you know, all coming together into this um, uniquely designed castle. Now, you won't see the princesses or queens images on the exterior or the towers and domes, but they are represented with elements of those. So we're going to take a look at a couple of them. So uh, for representing Mulan, you have Mushu on top of the dome, uh, but you can also see in there cherry blossom motif throughout it. Uh, in the next image, you can see for Snow White, it has the apple, of course, on top, but there you can also see the apple pattern in the dome as well. Now, Elsa and Anna are combined, and they have a represented snowflake on the top of their tower. And uh, also another example is Merida has a bow and arrow on there. And so I think it's beautiful structurally, too, of how they captured their their essence. Right. And for all you who aren't watching this on YouTube, you can see them um, and what they, they they've placed these kind of at the top of these pillars, as Michelle was explaining before. So yeah, if you if they're there um, and yeah, I love that you can just I love that they've taken all the Disney princesses and given them a little touch of this. Because, you know, this is obviously, it, uh, it was Sleeping Beauty Castle, but now it's kind of transformed into a castle that celebrates all the princesses. Well, 13. But, well, that's right. There's been new ones added since this castle was built. So not every princess is there. Well, there is a castle that represents all the Disney oh. princesses. So that's where you may be getting a little confused. Me this, confused? That never happens. Did you see the promo from this week? I'm never confused. <laughs> Never, ever. Uh, I can't wait to hear more about that. Uh, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, that's good to know. But yeah, it's great that they celebrate so much of this history within these castles. And I guess we're going to hear more about that here coming up. Go ahead, Michelle. Right, right. Um, so let's move on to the Shanghai castle, because that's the one I think you're thinking of, because it is the one that does represent all the Disney princesses. And one of the things when I was doing my research and... <clears throat> People have heard this. I know we've heard this, um, but I saw it over and over. So it was definitely a, a very key principle that the Imagineers were committed to, and that is the authentically Disney, distinctly Chinese uh, elements in their design, their production efforts, et cetera. So um, let's look at that as we consider the enchanted storybook castle that's in Shanghai. And so um, again, how they have done this is like, for example, in the towers on the outside, they feature some traditional Chinese images like Chinese cloud patterns, um, peonies, which is China's national flower, um, magnolia flowers, which are an homage, homage to Shanghai. So they, and, and of course they have the elements of in the imagery of things that we would associate with Disney. So it brings together that authentically Disney, distinctly Chinese elements in this castle. Yeah. And when you look at it, you can tell, I mean, it's got that regal feature to it, that it's a castle. It's definitely a castle, but there's just something about the design that does shout something Chinese, Asian, for sure. Um, there's that nuance to it that you're like, oh yeah, this is different. This isn't European. There's something different about it. Right, right, exactly. And we'll get into some of the, the storytelling and the features of, of the castles uh, in a moment. But I wanted to share some fun facts more as they're related to the designs of each of these uh, castles. Uh, Disney incorporated the assistance of a feng shui master who helped position buildings and objects at Hong Kong Disneyland in order to create harmony and balance. I thought that was kind mm, of great that like they, that. yeah. Um, also in the Hong Kong, with the Hong Kong castle, when they were renovating it, uh, obviously they used high technology like 3D modeling to make the design. But at times they used helium filled balloons to help them visualize the height of objects in perspective to the to the structure mm. and the backdrop. So I thought that was kind of cool uh, thing that they did. Um, the other thing, and this one um, really I, was so touching to me when they were 
you know, preparing the transformation. They invited guests, cast members, community partners, uh, and even some Disney friends like Mickey Mouse to put their personal dreams and wishes written down on magical dream cards. And then these cards, I'm going to try not to get emotional. These mm -hmm. cards were placed in a treasure chest and lifted to the top of the tallest Aww. tower in the castle. And the reason they did that is they wanted to ensure that the heart of the resort would always be filled with hopes and dreams. Oh, that's so I know. wonderful Isn't and sweet cool? and magical for sure. Yeah. Um, for Leaping Beauty's uh, castle in Disneyland Paris, um, as it was getting ready for the 30th anniversary, they were in need to do some restorations. I mean, a building that's 30 years old, um, it's going to go through a lot of weathering. So the Imagineers actually sought out to bring in some experts, um, some French experts that were recognized in the field of historical monument refurbishment. Um, now, Tracy Eck, who is the art director of Walt Disney Imagineering Paris and the design and show quality, who was supervising that castle renovation project, said, and I'm going to quote her, some of the suppliers with whom we were lucky to collaborate on this project only work on historical monuments. When they accepted this assignment, we realized that they viewed our castle as a historical monument. Ooh getting emotional. Um, <laughs> that is part of our heritage, which was very touching. And I thought that, yeah, that was amazing. In fact, as I was uh, reading on, they actually uh, included some, some uh, a entity that worked on Notre Dame, mm. just in the normal restoration of Notre Dame. And of course, the sad, you know, outcome of having the fire then after the, they were done with Disneyland, they were obviously uh, getting on to back to Notre Dame to help mm -hmm. with the restoration oh, wow. of that after the fire. But I mean, to think about that, the, the company and the artists who work on such a monumental showpiece as Notre Dame were the ones working on Sleeping Beauty's castle in yeah. Disneyland Paris. It's there's some impact important people that uh, know their uh, know their stuff, know mm -hmm. their architecture, know their um, their techniques, their skills. Right. Um, that's pretty amazing to actually think that yeah, it, that the same people that are putting together or, or, or kind of fixing up this Disney castle are the ones that are you know putting together, putting back together an iconic, right, iconic building like Notre Dame. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it just, it just shows the reverence of the Disneyland castle mm -hmm. for sure. Um, now for Shanghai, the enchanted storybook castle is actually the tallest, biggest, and most interactive of all Disney castles. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's the only castle that celebrates all Disney princesses. Yeah. Uh, no matter what I said. <laughs> Don't listen to you me. I'm not the one who does the great research here. <laughs> you were just trying to lead me in because I was so close to starting That's to it. talk about That's Shanghai. That's it. It was, it was all set perfect, up. Perfect, perfect. Uh, you're welcome. That's what I'm trying to say exactly. here. You're welcome. <laughs> so let's move on to some of the, the, the concept of storytelling with these castles. And I, I took something from the Disney Imagineering website because I, I, I liked how they, they mentioned some things. First of all, they said, quote, a castle is more than its structure. It is a building brought to life by the story it holds. So let's look at some of these storytelling elements that make each of them unique too. For Shanghai Castle, I again, going back to the Imagineers website, I liked how they, they described it. They said, it is a palace that celebrates all of the Disney princesses by giving a home to each of their stories and inspiring royals to inhabit their favorite tales. Within its walls, Enchanted Storybook Castle is a replendent with artful representations, thoughtful design, and opportunities to explore from the once in a once upon a time adventure walk through attraction where guests encounter Snow White to the voyage of Crystal Grotto boat ride that ventures into the castle's secret underground chambers. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So inside of um 
of the Shanghai Castle, there's a grand rotunda and great hall. And you can see, again, mosaics. Uh, they have an amazing chandelier, but they also have these regal banners representing all of the storybook princesses, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, now, with the interactive part, it sounds amazing, is, okay, so you you follow this trail of pr pixie dust that leads you to a spiral staircase. That's like following Michelle. There's always a trail of pixie dust behind her, too. <laughs> I wish. Um, but there you'll find the magic mirror, and it, 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 as they say, it beckons you inside through a portal uh, into the fairy tale world. And then you, again, get to, is it? Incredible technology or magic, I'm not sure, but you do get to interact. Um, it's a very immersive experience. You can talk and interact with the animated creatures. You can help them tidy up uh, the cottage there with the dwarves. Uh, you can wave goodbye to the dwarves as they head off to work and actually confront the evil queen mm. as she plots her, her wicked scheme. So, that's funny I, know. I don't know if i want to i'm on vacation do i really have to help clean up the, the, the cottage really <laughs> well maybe you're managing you're guiding you're okay you know, that's giving it. them I, advice yeah, <laughs> that i can do that i can do um now beneath as i mentioned uh through the quote from the imagineers beneath the storybook castle the enchanted storybook castle is uh, a water attraction called journey to the voyage of crystal grotto um, and we've actually talked about this in, in a previous episode, but there they, you know, you're, you're going through caverns and you see um, little vignettes of different stories, such as Aladdin, Ariel, Rapunzel, and Belle. Um, and, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, lighting effects, music, water effects. So it, it just gives you like, as you're going through a chance to glimpse into the stories mm. there. Now, this castle does have a dining area. It's the Royal Banquet Hall. Mm. It's beautiful. Um, it's a great place to have a character dining venue. There are five princess-themed dining halls that include Cinderella, Mulan, Tiana, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty. And the Disney characters that come around are actually dressed in their royal attire. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which one of those dining rooms, if you could pick one of them, which one would Ooh. you want to like be your first? I mean, obviously you'd want to do them all because yeah. they all have to be amazing. But which one do you think would be yours? I want to say Tiana, but I have to say Sleeping Beauty kind of being an original castle theme might go what about you i uh, i think sleeping beauty was the first one that mm -hmm. called out to me but i uh, any of them would be amazing i think mulan would be fascinating as well right to see that. yeah but um, all of them all i, I just want to do all of them for sure. for sure i want to schedule or each room <laughs> <laughs> or can we just have like a course in each room right <laughs> that'd be cool um now, inside Hong Kong Disneyland's castle, they have the Royal Reception Hall, and that's where you get to meet princesses throughout the day, so meet and greets. Um, but it's also where they have bronze sculptures of the featured princesses and queens. You remember how many there were, honey? <laughs> no. 13. Uh, 13. That's what I was about to say. But you, you didn't let me get to it. But yeah, Sorry. I was actually going to be right, which is a rarity for me, so... Um. Take it for what you want. There you go. Now, in the rotunda, there are actually 13 columns also there. And at the top of each column, they have scenes from these Disney princesses, um, mainly their sidekicks or, or loyal friends, let's say. So Ariel's column has Flounder and Sebastian, um, Mrs. Potts, Chip, Lumiere, and Cogsworths are Cogworth is on Belle's column. Um, Moana has um, her pet pig, Pua, Pua. and of course, Hey, Hey, hey. right. Our <laughs> favorite, her favorite rooster. <laughs> right. So, you know, so as you can see, they, they're incorporating the storyline there inside, even just on the column. So a lot of great details. Um, and then on the floor is a, a paved medallion that has 13 flowers symbolizing each of the princesses. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So let's look at some of the crown jewels of these castles mm. and things that maybe are hidden gems or special elements that you, if you get a chance to go see one of these that, that you might want to watch for. Um, 
have you heard it before I'm going to talk about it? Have you heard of any that you'd think you'd be uh, interested in checking out? Well, I mean, as far as what the, the crown gems or whatever Just, are. Yeah, some special elements about. No, I actually, I, I haven't done the research because I know Michelle's going to do the research. <laughs> so I haven't. Um, I know that uh, we've been to Disneyland Paris twice and we still have not seen the dragon. Uh, at the base of uh, Sleeping Beauty right. Castle there. I'd still like to do that, but I wouldn't consider that the you know crown gem of it all. Right. Um, so I'm interested to find out what we do need to see and who else would be better to bring it to us than Michelle. <laughs> You're so sweet. Okay, let's start with the Disneyland Paris Castle there. Um, there's an oval-shaped stained glass window at the top of the main tower, and it is um, permanently lit to signify a royal presence. Um, just like the Chateau de Chambord in France indicate indicated when the king was present. Um, so I thought that was kind of a cute That's nice, app, yeah. thing that they have. Also in that castle, they have tapestries um, in the gallery, that authentic Aubusson tapestries. I don't, again, no, easy for you to say. I don't know if I said that right. Um, but those are made in accordance with uh, traditional methods of master weavers with a legacy of over 500 years. So again, the attention to the historic details and elements in this castle are amazing. Um, but one of the things that I, that, that I found and, and thought was so cute, um, and that we are going to show you a picture here, is on the outside of some of their spires, their golden spires, they have snails. Um, and the snails are also covered in gold leaf and they look like they're trying to get away <laughs> from the French hook cooks by climbing. They cook fires. us here. We need to get going. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't move very quickly. So <laughs> as hard as they try, they don't seem to really get away. I know. I know. But they're not cooked yet. So I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> yet. Um, now, also, as you mentioned, there is a dragon's lair in this uh, castle or below this castle. And uh, you want to be pretty quiet when you're walking by, because if you wake him, uh, he's going to demonstrate his force for Ooh, sure. I'm definitely going to scream when we go by there because I want to <laughs> see that. I want to see that happen. Um, now, on, an, on another castle in Hong Kong, the sleep into that castle. As you remember, it started as a Sleeping Beauty's castle. Uh, so they have represented in there uh, flora, fauna, and merryweather. Mm. And they're actually spreading pixie dust across the castle's breezeway. And then it, it kind of filters into the lights, into the chandeliers, and leads you to the rotunda where there are 9,000 points of dancing light. Oh, how sweet is that? I know, That's right? That's crazy cool. Yeah. Um, and another interesting component of the castle at Hong Kong is that the Imagineers, when they were putting their, how many princesses and queens? 13. Yes. Um, they, I have a bad short term <laughs> memory, but I can remember that far. <laughs> Ask me in five minutes, I'll forget. Um, they recognized that the values of the princesses in Disney stories kind of evolved over the years. Um, mainly in, in relationship to their dependence on men. So they wanted to be very mindful of how they displayed them inside the castle. And, and I found a quote from Amanda Chu, who was a producer with Walt Disney Imagineering Asia. And she said, instead of portraying them in a very submissive way, we portrayed them all as powerful women in a very engaging pose. I thought that was a great attention to detail and recognition of, you know, if you're honoring these princesses and queens, honor them for what substance they bring. Right. Especially since Disney for years was kind of criticized for maybe the portrayal of some of the princesses where they kind of needed a man right. always to save them. And that has definitely not been the case recently, but yeah, they are all strong in their different way, even if they did have some man come and save them at some point. Right, right. Or maybe he was just a sidekick. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know, but for example, um, with with um, Jasmine, they they don't have Aladdin with her on the, the carpet, mm. you know, so things like that. And just their poses, um, you know, it, you know, for like Moana being very, you know, I, 
just very strong, you yeah. know, but. showcasing who they are and right. what's, what's important about them and not and having to bring anybody else into the equation to show that. Exactly. Exactly. So anyways, that's kind of a look at some of the elements that make these castles unique. Um, you know, we know that the castles play an important role within the parks. They're the center point, you know, the heart of them. Um, they they weren't really designed to be necessarily an attraction, but more to um, draw attention and to inspire the fairy taleness of what the castles and the lands around them represent. So, uh, hopefully, th th this gave you some you know more details of things to consider and appreciation for what the Imagineers did to design these. And uh, hopefully, you you like we want to. Uh, capture an opportunity to see them. Do you have a, you know, what would be your number one on your bucket list? Uh, since we've already done the uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland Paris, um, I think I want to see that one in Hong Kong mm -hmm. that they've adapted and right. changed and see, you know, from the ground level where it used to be uh, almost a carbon copy of Sleeping Beauty Castle in Disneyland and how they've uh, evolved it into what it is now and how incredible that is. I mean, I want to see them all, but maybe that one, right. I would say if you just want me, if I can only do one, that might be the one. I I, I actually agree and, and, and kind of for the same reason. So um, the one thing I do want to do say is for those of you who subscribe to the newsletter, and if you don't, you can sign up and subscribe. Uh, we will be in this uh, upcoming um episode we're going to feature for you some a, a little craft project but it, it is a uh where you can make your own paper replica of both the hong kong and shanghai castles so wow. that will be featured that's special <laughs> Yes. They put um, that together. Yeah, I, I didn't create them, so don't worry. They they they're artistry from Imagineers. Um, and they're not, you know, the the whole big spiel. But I think you'll if you. It's not going to take up your whole living room. No, no. no. Okay. But I think it's a fun little project if you're interested. You know, it, it has the templates you can print out and color and cut out and, and create with the instructions there. So I thought that would be fun uh, after this episode to share that with our newsletter subscribers. Very nice. All the more reason to be signed up for the newsletter. It is full of Michelle-ness <laughs> and including crafts, which you never got when I was the one who was the main person behind the newsletter. Uh, so it just tells you how much better it is now than it ever was before. I don't know about that. Uh, so great is. job. Michelle always does the best research oh, okay, and it you. proved once again here <laughs> In this episode, it always does. I always learn so many fascinating facts, new facts, 13 princesses. I still remember. I don't know if I'll remember that for very long, but uh, for now, I do remember that. Uh, but just so much fun, interesting stuff. These Disney castles are amazing, and Michelle does an amazing piece on this. Again, once you get done listening to this episode, uh, go to YouTube, uh, check out the uh, video version of this. should be dropping on somewhere around Tuesday, I think, depending on uh how it comes with the editing for it um but it'll give you even a, a more expanded viewpoint on this because michelle also <laughs> along with her research did a great job of getting some photos to go along with it which you'll want to see there i appreciate that Eddie. thank you and that is a look at the majesty of disney castles from abroad <laughs>